The uh, meeting of the Village of Beach Park Village Board to order. Uh, this is uh, the April 28th, 7 p.m. regular meeting. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Gust is absent. Trustee Jensen? Not absent. Trustee Miller? Present. Trustee Addison? Here. Trustee Siddick? Here. Trustee Wells? Here. The attorney's on his way. He's sprinting across the parking lot. Yeah. I was going to say, we get a break on our attorney here? bill this yeah. month, right? Donald is here. When he walks in, let's just say motion approved. <laughs> <laughs> if you would rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> oh! Glad you can make that. <laughs> what? How much does he charge per minute? Oh, it's <laughs> a discount. We got a discount tonight, yeah. yeah. I had some traffic in the city. I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to come from the city. Yeah, I was, I'm usually not down there. So. <laughs> all right. Um, you didn't get shot. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, first item uh, tonight uh, is public comment on any agenda items. This would be the first of two opportunities for the public to comment. Uh, the second one comes at the end, and it's for any and all topics. So anyone that would wish to address the board on any of the agenda items, uh, please come to the podium and state your name and your case. All right. Nothing at this point. Um, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, tonight, the consent agenda includes the following. Approval of the Village Board regular meeting minutes from April 14th. Uh, bills presented for payment in the amount of $69,543.22. The public safety, community development, and finance reports from March of 2022. Is there anything the board would have us consider separate from the consent agenda? <coughs> Move approved. We have a motion by Trustee Jensen to approve. Second. Second by Trustee, what's your name again? Regina. <laughs> um, any discussion? Um, I have a question. Sure. Actually, under the um, the building report, uh, Andrew, is there any way we can get comparative data on the f vacancy and foreclosures? You, you've got a nice table on page 16. And it shows <clears throat> how many current foreclosures we have. And um, I just wonder, is there some way we could get the information on year to date last year at this time? I'm curious as, if it's gone down or up or. Uh, I don't know. I can I can try. Okay. Um, the system that we use for that is that third party pro champs. Um, oh, so yeah. I can get the I can pull the snapshots. Um, I don't know how much data they keep. So now that we're, we are doing this mm -hmm. um, and keeping it with our monthly report, we'll certainly be able to build that record by next year. Build but our I don't own know how record. Far, I don't know how far back I can go. Okay. Okay. And, and deregistered means it's no longer registered as a foreclosure? Is Correct. That it? Okay. Okay. Thanks. That was my only question. Okay. Any other discussion? I'd just like to highlight in the finance uh, report fund review that, that our balances have uh, and, and our various funds have recovered nicely from the, the uh, pandemic events of the last couple of years and are, are very healthy. They're, they're well into the black and uh, they're, they're doing well. So that's it. Very good. Thank you. All right. Um, roll call, please. Dusty Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller, abstain. <coughs> Trusty Addison. Aye. Trusty Siddig. Aye. Trusty Wells. Aye. And Mayor Hooker. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes have it. All right. Uh, Mayor, uh, motion carries. Um, Moving on to the mayor's report, the only thing I have tonight is our public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2022-23 budget. Um, do we have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Addison, second by Trustee Miller. Um, roll call, please. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Addison. Aye. Trustee City. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. All right. Um, the purpose for this is to uh, allow the public to comment on the proposed budget. It has been available at Village Hall for how long? 
Three weeks. Three weeks. Um, so uh, this is our, our required public hearing. If anyone would like to comment on the proposed budget, uh, similar to the public comment, all we'd ask is that you would come to the podium and uh, give us your name and address your concerns. Anyone? A lot of times our hearings are like this, which I take as a compliment, I guess. Um, and we'll have a little bit more discussion um, uh, up under the Finance Committee report uh, of informational. Uh, but um, if there's no public comment, then I guess I uh, need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Right. Oh, motion by Trustee Addison, second by Trustee Miller. Um, roll call, please. <coughs> Trustee Jensen? Aye. Trustee Miller? Aye. Trustee Anderson? Aye. Trustee Siddick? Aye. Trustee Wells? Aye. And motion carries. Um, moving on then, uh, under trustee reports, we have Trustee Jensen for Finance Committee. And, uh, okay, Mayor, first of all, our, our next uh, last committee meeting is May 25th, 6 p.m., before I forget that. And then, guess what? I have an ordinance. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to offer a motion uh, approving an ordinance uh, approving the fiscal 22-23 annual budget for the Village of Beach Park. Um, there were some changes that, that I don't. Uh, we, it was mentioned, brought up by, by our finance director at last night's uh, finance committee meeting. There were some small changes made, relatively small, um, due to some some recent events. One being, as we all know, fuel has. Uh, costs have spiked since this budget was developed. Um, the the fuel budget was increased by twenty thousand dollars for the coming year, approximately. I don't know the exact number. Uh, and also, uh, you'll there as you'll hear later in this uh, agenda, we had uh, sewage pumps fail fail at one of our lift stations, so we had a more or less emergency repair. Um, there there's going to be budgeting for um, standby units, so those are kind of mission critical. If the sewage pump serving your neighborhood fails, things start to back up pretty quick. And uh, so, so those are important to have on hand. So those two items were, uh, were changes from the, uh, the original uh, draft budget. Uh, that said, um, it's, it's, a, it's a balanced budget as usual. Uh, some of the numbers I've been communicating with Peggy are actually conservative in the, in the budget as far as the initial values for the various funds in that the projections were made some time ago and um, our, our funds have been doing better than projected. So the initial amounts, uh, which are just for reference anyway, mm -hmm. uh, do appear different from that in our monthly finance report. So there's my my motion and, and blabbering. Second. <laughs> we have a motion by Trustee Jensen to approve the budget and second by Trustee Miller. Uh, discussion. That was a second with no blabbering. <laughs> I think That's it was right. implied. <laughs> it was implied. Second. Yes, yes. Um, I would, I would uh, like to take a moment to thank, uh, as always, uh, staff and uh, uh, committee members for their diligence in um, putting this together. Um, I, there's, there's, uh, it takes a special type of person to uh, stare at numbers all day long and make them tally and uh, our uh, budget uh, treasurer, jack of all trades, money wise, is a Peggy is, uh, is always there doing that for us. And I do uh, personally appreciate that. Um, also, uh, just to reflect for a moment um, and not to gloss over, um, as, as Trustee Jensen said, it's balanced as usual. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is a privilege that we've had here in Beach Park for 33 years, 30, yeah, 33 years coming up this year, um, to, to say over and over and over again that it's a balanced budget, that we're not in the same uh, deficit situation that so many of the communities in, in Lake County and, and the nation are. Um, I often attribute that to the fact that we came to be a village at a time when Others were suffering already for legacy decisions that previous administrations and boards had made on their behalf, um, or that things had changed, um, um, like our neighbors to the north with the loss of a major taxpayer. Um, we haven't ever counted on something that we didn't have, and we've never counted on something, uh, we've never had any one thing so big uh, contributing to our budget that if it went away, it would hurt us. 
and, uh, and it makes for a very comfortable place to be. Um, we continue to operate as though every dollar belongs to us and as it, as it is our responsibility to. And uh, the fact that we're able to have the uh, facilities and the equipment and the personnel that we have um, while staying within our means without a real estate tax, and we have to beat that drum continuously because that is no small feat on its own, to, to be able to say that um, we sit here with a general fund uh, budget of four and a half plus million and the rest go on and on. What's the, the aggregate total of our? It's uh, the total. Is it, is it the 14 million? The total expense budget is 9.6. 9.6, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, oh, then that, that's the rest of the funds and all that, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, uh, almost a $10 million budget, and we sit here uh, balanced as always. So um, I just wanted to add my two cents in there and uh, an appreciation. And any other comments? Well, yeah, to add on to what you said, um, <coughs> the, the healthy situation that our budget's in, allows us to do some planning. We're discussing that also at the Finance Committee. Um, the, the sewer pump failure is a good illustration of the need to look at long-term planning for uh, replacement of aging uh, right. infrastructure. Yep. And so um, staff is, is in the process of, of early planning for a long-term capital improvement plan where similar to our vehicle replacement uh, yep. fund where you know the trucks are going to wear out. So you might as well set aside money for it, earmark money for it, so that when that happens, it's not a surprise and a major, uh, a major catastrophe that you, that you have to work with. Um, this building, you know, we, we talked about roofing and, you know, various, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of work done on it in the, in the recent past. The, the computer servers are, have a you know, five year life expectancy or whatever, and you gotta replace them. So those kinds of things with this, with a, a budget that's in the black and substantial in the black, you can, you have the luxury of being able to do that and, and not, borrow money to fix things but put money aside mm -hmm. to fix things and and at the same time continue to pave a million plus dollars worth of roads a year and you know it, it's it's exactly where we want to be so yeah i think we've gotten a little maybe well i don't say we speak for myself maybe a little complacent about the fact that we always have a balanced budget, and it's not something that ever should be taken for granted. Right. There are some communities, I think, that may have balanced budgets this year due to government uh, little gifts. Yep. Free, free, money. <laughs> free, <laughs> free money. You know, that, that's only a one-time deal, mm -hmm. and you can't build your future around something like that. It, that really is an anomaly, and we don't, we don't do that. We're not in that position. No. no. We've never heard the term tax anticipation warrants here. No. I hope we never do. No. <laughs> <laughs> so many of the taxing bodies uh, that we're familiar with uh, rely on them, uh, not just once. So, very good. And that, Mayor, concludes my report. Well, let's get the budget passed first, right? Oh, I beg your pardon. We didn't vote yet. <laughs> we, were still chat we were We were I battling got, I got about it. I got wound up. Yeah. Um, uh, roll call, please. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Addison. Aye. Trustee Siddick. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Jensen. All right, that now concludes my report. Very good, thank you. Motion carries, all right. Uh, Trustee Gus is not here for Parks and Recreation and I don't see any agenda <coughs> items there. We'll move on to Planning, Building, and Zoning Committee. Trustee Wells. Thank you, Your Honor. After your consideration and ordinance approving a conditional use permit for an auto sales, supplies, and service facility at 37937 North Sheridan Road, <coughs> conditional permit, conditional use permit for use Vehicle sales supplies and services, <coughs> which is known as Midtown Motors, was approved on March 2018. One year extensions were granted January 2019, January 2020, December of 2020. They're currently requesting a, uh, an extension request dated November the 8th, 2021, for a two year extension. The building committee discussed the request at its meeting in February and in April and agreed that a two-year extension would be appropriate due to the record of compliance with the original CUP. The ordinance prepared by the board for the board's consideration would be approved, would approve the conditional use for a period of two years and incorporate all the original plan, zoning, code departures, and conditions of approval. And again, I entertain that in the form of a motion. 
Second. We have a motion by Trustee Wells, second by Trustee Siddick. Any discussion? All right. I, I've got a question. Sure. I'm pleased to support this. And, and looking at the at the uh, report from staff that that this uh, that this business has been in full compliance with all the requirements. I'm just wondering if there'd be a means of making this an automatically extensible um, condition use permit on a year-to-year -year basis, and not have to these folks have to come back in on a regular basis to renew it, go through the whole process. Um, with the proviso that they continue to follow the the uh, the requirements, is there is there a means of doing that? Uh, I, I think we could look at that. Um, we, I mean, not tonight. Of yeah, course. yeah. I, I, most conditional use permits don't have this burden of uh, annual renewals. They earned that uh, through uh, bad behavior, <laughs> um, and so in light of the good behavior, we're going to two years now. If things stay good, then I agree. Then I think the next time around we can look at um, some either a longer term or something that would be automatic until... Yeah, because that's time. a fairly burdensome process it to, is. to go through. It is. And and for them it's just a letter, but... Um, it's, oh, they didn't have to go to hearing the... No, no, this is all uh, at staff level, correct, Andrew? Yeah. That's right. Huh. Yeah. So it, it's it's just them putting the formal request okay. in, but it's yeah, it's not a full hearing or anything. Okay, I thought I thought they had to go through the whole hearing. But process. we we did this initially just to keep the heavy thumb of. Oh, and uh, I, I agree. There are, yeah. there are conditions where you need to do that. We've seen that many times. Yep. But you do want to reward the the, the good behavior. Too. Absolutely. And, and keep in mind too, without a time limit, you still have the ability to suspend or revoke a condition oh, exactly. permit exactly. for failure to comply. Yep. Yeah. After a hearing, so yep. you always have that ability to enforce. Right. Yeah, I envision almost like a mm -hmm. an annual renewal, automatic renewal, if, unless conditions aren't met. Or yeah, but a lot of communities have no time limits. They yep. grant it with conditions. Sure. And you may never hear. Hopefully, right. you and, never and hear and from. If you've got a, a business that's successful and right. and yep. A benefit to the community. Why put them through that? Yeah, that's and and that's where they were prior to the revocation of the conditional use permit right. that got us to where we are now. Okay. So yeah, absolutely. Normally, this would not be a requirement. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. Roll call, please. Trustee Sinek. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Honor. Next, we have uh, for your consideration an ordinance extending the conditional use permit granted uh, by ordinance for the conversion of a non conforming use in an SR district at 12920 West Wadsworth Road. And uh, they were granted a one year extension of a conditional use permit for a non conforming contractor's business originally granted by ordinance. The business completed the 90-day and the 180-day action items required in the 2021 extension with two exceptions. Number one, the repair of the garage structure. Number two, replacement or reconfiguration of the topsoil bin. The garage was not repaired because it was determined to be impractical due to the deteriorating condition. The current extension request includes a request by the business to retain the garage for a limited use as secure equipment storage. The building committee discussed the extension request at its meeting in April and has recommended approval of a one-year extension subject to the demolition of the garage structure and replacement slash reconfiguration of the topsoil bin. Um, I'm assuming that's within 45 days. It says with here. I assume it is a, a typo within. Within, correct. Yeah, okay. Uh, the committee agreed with staff suggesting that the storage container or shed be committed to provide secure on-site storage. An ordinance grant and one-year extension has been drafted for the board's consideration, which is attached. The ordinance reaffirms the requirements of the 2016 and 2021 ordinances and incorporates recommendations of the building committee. And again, this is Jose and Son, and this is uh, again submitted in the form of a of a. Uh, All right. We have a motion by Trustee Wells. Second. Second. Second by Trustee Miller, sorry. <laughs> I'm hearing echoes. Uh, any discussion on this? I, I had a question when we're recommending the, the tearing down of the garage and the suggestion of a, a container for storage, would they need some kind of a 
variance for that because I believe the containers are not unless there's a zoning specific that they're allowed there or so the zoning code does allow uh, certain uh, does allow a container it's usually in conjunction with a construction project um, this uh, the reason I suggested putting it in the ordinance was to make it clear that in in place of the garage structure that was so dilapidated uh, that they could go ahead and request a permit for the temporary container and it would be allowed through the CUP. Okay, so have we given them a, a time frame for the garage removal? Uh, I have informed them uh, that this was the recommendation, that the 45-day recommendation was okay. the recommendation of the building committee. Um, so they, they haven't responded to that recommendation yet, but uh, they, are, they have been informed. Okay, because I know we went around and around, you know, we even continued the discussion a couple of times and we gave them quite a bit of leeway. And, yep. and I think they, like, like as was stated, they complied with all but one of the issues um, in there. So I understand they worked hard towards it, but I just, I guess I think, you know, kind of like we talked about with the last one, we're not quite at the level where we want it to be an automatic approval because there are some mm. issues. So if they have a 40 day period, 45 days to get rid of the garage and possibly bring in a container for temporary storage. And then that would be at their, at, if, if they prefer not to do that. But uh, the suggestion was based on the fact that they are looking for some type of secure <coughs> storage on the site. Uh, okay. I think their request letter notes that they had some theft at the at the property. Right. So yeah. uh, if they and want some place to, to securely store, this would be a solution. And it sounds like this situation may remedy itself based on the second paragraph of their letter talking right. about they family issues and right. possibly selling the land and all of that. So um, it's something yeah, they're, they're just trying to buy a little time. And right. uh, if they've come in this far, um, I think right. we're... I remember the the <coughs> ailing the ailing father being an issue the last time, yeah. and I'm wow. certainly sympathetic with, yeah. with that, having just dealt with an Alzheimer's uh, <coughs> family member. You know, so I, I understand that that's it may just be a matter of time. So yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Roll call, please. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Addison. Aye. Trustee Siddick. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, we have for your consideration an ordinance amending the Village of Beach Park Municipal Code, Title V, Business License and Regulations, Chapter 5.02, Business Registration, Related to Home Occupations. At the Building and Planning and Zoning Committee meeting of April 12th, the committee discussed the proposed amendments of the Business Registration Regulations for Home Occupations in Title V of the Municipal Code. The current verbiage of the Title V exempts home occupation from the registry, oh. registration requirement while the fee schedule in Title III requires a fee for virtual offices located in residences. The consensus of the committee was that the registration should be required to, to document compliance with the standard for home occupation, but a lower fee could be established for home occupations that have no need for an inspection. Is that the ordinance would delete the home occupation exemption in Title V and allow for the inspection to be waived for home occupation without deliveries, visitors, or physical stock of material? The recommendation relating to the fee schedule update has been forwarded to the Finance Committee. And again, 